All right, this is applications of differentiation. Um, some examples of uh, maximum and minimums. And basically, I'm just going to run us through. Here's a little problem. Um, y equals 4x squared minus 12x plus 5. Now, that's between the values of 0 to 3, including them, of course. And um, first of all, what you might think is, oh my gosh, I need to... I need to graph it, so at 0 equals 5, at, at uh, 3 it's blah 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 blah, it's just 5, and then, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it goes down or up, I just gotta plug in a bunch of points, and oh, I better draw a little cable, and X and Y, and, you know, 1, 2, and, uh, just a headache, right? And let me just tell you now, you don't need to do any of that, so don't worry about it. Um, first off, let's just solve for f, uh, f, or function of, uh, prime, so y prime, y prime will equal, okay, that would be 8x minus 12. Pretty simple. Well, we want to find where the maximums and minimums are, right? Well, that has to equal smack dab in the middle, 0. Okay, so you add the 12 over, you, you add the 12 over, you, um, and then you divide it by 8. So y prime equals, um, or I mean, sorry, x, prime, x equals 1.5. That'll be your solution. y prime equals 0, remember. Always remember that. So, um... Yeah, so we know that basically this tells us where the location of, of the maximum or minimum, whatever the case is, um, where that location is. Now, if you want to find this value, you would actually plug it into the original function. But what if we just didn't want to plug in all those values? We wanted to just find out, hey, is this a maximum or a minimum? Well, keep going. Do the second derivative, right? Well, the second derivative is just 8. Well, as far as I'm concerned, 8 is greater than 0, therefore this must be a minimum, right? Very handy dandy. So, uh, notice how we didn't need to draw. We didn't need to draw. And that was kind of nice because it will actually save you a lot of time on your tests. And uh, basically, n knowing these two little techniques will make you pretty much capable of drawing about 90% of all graphs. In uh, No matter how complex they are, you can usually use these kind of techniques. Uh, just the, the, the first derivative and the second derivative to kind of get a good feel for what it looks like and where the inflection points are and where the maximum and minimums are and I mean since we know it's 1.5 we could we could just plug that in to the function we you know you just go y of 1.5 equals 4 times 1.5 squared minus 12 times 1.5 plus 5 and just for argument's sake, uh, I'll, I'll let you know that that equals negative 4. So, I mean, someday, somewhere down here in our little graph, you'll find that negative 4, and it'll be something like that. I mean, I don't know really what it looks like. I'm just saying, you know that this is a minimum, and you know that that's, that's your critical point. And if you wanted to find where, you know, you could find where y equals 0, and then you would know where these two contact points are, and, or, or two um, intercepts are, and you would be able to um, draw a more accurate graph. So, um, let me just walk us through maybe another example. Um, let's see, we, we can do this one. I like this one. y equals x squared minus 1 to the third power. You're sitting there going, oh my gosh, this is going to be messy. Well, you're right. It's going to be messy. 3 times x squared minus 1 squared, right? That was just doing this whole thing. And then you got to do the chain rule. So you got to do the derivative of the inside, which is times 2x 
So the whole thing equals 6x, x squared minus 1 squared equals 0. Well, you got to know that essentially at what, what points will this equal 0? Well, either look at this. This is a product, right? You have this value times this value. So this is almost like f times g, right? Well, if f equals 0, if f equals 0, this will this whole function can equal 0, so we got to solve for it, right? So I would say that f equals 6x, right? What would make that equal to 0? Well, x would have to equal 0. So that's one solution, but what if uh, g equals 0, you know? So you'd have x squared minus 1, but that's a whole quantity squared, right? Well, what if that equals 0? Well, you could just get rid of the square, add a 1 over, and then square root the 1, which is just 1. Pretty simple. So, x equals 1. So those are your two solutions. And we know that these are essentially our critical points. And what I mean by critical points is that they could be a maximum, they could be a minimum. It's one or the other, right? So let's investigate um, which these are. And they could not they could not be maximum or minimums. They could be just an inflection, or like a flat inflection point. So let's find out, right? All right, so y squared. Where was I? Oh, yeah, we got to do this big mess. Well, remember... Got to do the product rule now for this. So let's do the product of the first, or the derivative of the first, plus the, uh, times the second, plus uh, the first vote number times the derivative of the second. So we're just doing the product rule. So product rule states that this is essentially the answer. Plus. 6x times 2 times x squared minus 1 times 2x. So rather than trying to solve this, I'm just going to start plugging them in because it seems to be a little bit easier. We want to find out at the first value, 0, what is that? Okay, well, we just plug this in. We'll know that we have a 6 times essentially a negative 1 squared plus all this is going to equal 0 because we have a 6x. So that doesn't matter anyway. So the solution for this is just going to be simply 6. Well, remember 6 is greater than 0. Thus, this is a minimum this point at at, uh, uh, at x equals 0 we have a minimum so that's important to realize let's move on over we have very little room here but let's see if we can just do it real quick 1 equals this headache of a problem which is just going to be 6 times well actually you just put 1 into these into x squared minus 1 and it doesn't matter because x squared minus 1 is just going to equal 0 squared and actually you have an x squared minus 1 and then the second part so that'll also equal 0 see right here x squared minus 1 at uh, x equals 1 you just have this whole function equals 0 so This whole function is going to be y double prime equal to zero, which that doesn't say anything except for the fact that the graph does something similar to this. Means that either it's indeterminate or it's or that it's just flat. There's no um, rhyme or reason to it. Goes up, goes down. There's no. Um, this is just like an inflection point, and that's a good way of understanding it. Basically, it's no longer speeding up, 
it's no longer slowing down, it's just remaining constant velocity. So, And I think that's going to solve these examples for you, and I hope you have a good day.